Okay, so in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to export a Sibelius file and convert it into an audio file that you can either burn onto CD or convert into an MP3 as well. I'll also show you how to mix and blend the levels of the instruments within your stave so you can get a nice appropriate balance and how to also change the reverb settings within it. So we're just going to play through this a little bit to make sure we've got some sounds and we can actually hear all the contact player playing the choir. Okay, very good. And then we're going to go to the mixer section where we can adjust the volumes of the individual staves. So we've got soprano, alto, tenor and bass. If we just click the triangles on there, that'll open up the device that is actually playing the sounds within Sibelius. And if you notice here, we've got a volume fader for each channel. So I'll just play that and that'll get rid of the soprano. We'll turn it up. As you can hear that coming in there. I'll solo it. You can hear it on its own. Hear the volume changes as that goes up. Also, we have a reverb control for the soprano line. And the higher the, that's turned up, the more reverb you'll have. And you've got a control for each voice or each stave. And this is exactly the same whether you're working on a choir or a full symphony orchestra, it's exactly the same principle. You'll have a reverb control for each and a volume control. You'll also have a pan control as well, which is here. And what those do is they basically spread the sound between the left and the right headphone or the left and right speaker. So you can bring them in so they're a bit more narrow or you can add some real width to the sound as well by pushing them further out. In this case, I'm just going to bring them in. Bring down the soprano a little bit. And I'm also going to make the soprano the wettest or most reverberant sounding uh, line. So I'm just going to take down the reverb controls of all the others. We'll just have a listen to that now. That sounds fine. So once you're happy with your general mix and balance, the next thing to do is export the composition to an audio file. So you do that by going File, Export and Audio. And because the playhead wasn't at the very beginning of the score, uh, Sibelius will ask you whether you want to export the audio from the beginning. And basically, yes, you do want to do that. You don't want to start from kind of halfway through bar 10 or whatever. You want to start from the very beginning. And then it will ask you to save it in a particular folder, in a particular location, and uh, as a particular file name. So I'm just going to create a Sibelius folder within my music folder within my house. And once I've done that and chosen the folder, I'm just going to change this to choir audio. You can see that the, di uh, the directory of where it's being saved to is fine. And I'm going to click OK. This way, once the audio file is rendered, I know where to find it in Finder and how to access it to do the next stage. So it's just going to work out how this should sound as an audio file, and it's just going to take a few seconds, a few maybe a few minutes to render this. The more complicated and larger the piece of music, the longer it will take. So if you've got a full symphony orchestra playing for an hour, this will take quite a long time to do. If you've got a piano line playing for just a minute or so, it'll be very quick. So once that's exported and rendered, you can save uh, Sibelius, save, save your Sibelius file rather. And before we quit, I'm just gonna check that the audio file has been rendered properly. So I'm gonna go into the music folder, into Sibelius and click, right click choir audio and open it up with QuickTime Player. And I'm just gonna skip through to make sure that nothing's missing. We haven't truncated the beginning or the end of the composition. And once that's done, normally you'd do a save or a save as in Sibelius, but 
in this case because it was just one of the inbuilt songs that already comes with Sibelius. I'm just going to quit without saving. So now we have the audio file that is ready to burn onto CD. And the way you do that is by clicking Simply Burns. Just ignore that update. Just go Remind Me Later or Quit, etc. Click on the Audio CD icon within there. And then all you need to do is drag and drop the audio file from Finder window into Simply Burns. You can see that the tracks appeared there. And if there was a CD in there, you would just click Burn and it would burn the CD. But we're not gonna do that now. We're gonna show you how to convert it as an MP3. But that would be basically the same principle uh, for burning a CD as in the other tutorial video. So once Logic's open, we're just gonna create a new empty project. We're gonna create one audio track, and we're just gonna make sure the format is stereo. Basically, that means a left and a right channel. And we'll just expand that there a bit. And now we can just go into the Finder window again and drag Choir Audio into Logic, the similar way that we did for Simply Burns. And there's a little dialog box coming up, just creating an overview, which basically just means a picture of the waveform. And once that's done, you again, we can spot check just to make sure that the audio has come through OK and been imported well enough into Logic, which it has. So once we do that, we can set the locators by clicking the Set Locators button at the top of the transport, and that will do that for the highlighted region. Then we then click Bounce at the bottom left of the channel strip, but those fader parts will unclick PCM, click MP3, change the bitrate to 160 kilobytes per second, and then we need to find the right place to save the file. So I'm gonna save it back in the Sibelius file I created, so I'm going to go to Music, Sibelius, and Choir Audio, but I'm just going to change that to Choir MP3. And once that's done, we'll just leave all those other settings as they are on screen and click Bounce. And again, it's just going to do an offline render of the audio file, and it will convert it into an MP3, and then you can have a look in the Finder window just to double check that it's there. And that you you should notice that the uh, file size is significantly smaller. So this is just over four meg in size, which is perfect for an email attachment. Whereas the audio file is 40 meg, which is sort of way too big uh, to send as an email attachment, but perfect for burning onto CD. So, we should also just do a quick double check to make sure that the MP3 version is played and rendered properly. So we'll just check, two spot checks like we did before, just skip through the track, make sure there aren't any kind of horrible artifacts. Make sure that the beginning and end hasn't been truncated as well. That's really important to do. So once you've done that, you're pretty much ready to send it as an email attachment or burn it onto CD, whichever you need to do for your coursework. And that's it.